Okay, so one last point on the Mitzvah Chaviva thing. Uh, this is the Rav thing I was looking for yesterday. So this is in Mipnina Herav on page 189. So he has a little thing here, which you can take or leave. Okay, uh, I think it's interesting. So he says, So that's what the Rama says. We need to understand his uh, intent. Uh, why is it more chaviv than other mitzvahs of the Torah? Uh, sorry. So he adds a new question here, which we didn't explicitly say. If this is because... What, in, uh, on the Hare Kedem? Yeah. Oh, maybe he did. Maybe, I, maybe I'm mixing the two. So if it's because it has Pishuminisa, as it's implied by the rest of his... Uh, so he says three things, right? Um, Arbacosos and Seva is presuming Nisa. It's funny because we don't actually say that that's presuming Nisa, but I guess the implication, because it has the same halacha here of the Yerkaev uh, to like, even if you're supported by Sadaka, but then also Mikra um, Megillah, um, Which we say is Shasa Nisim. We say what? By Megillah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah correct. Yeah. Shemavar Himalayam Shasa Nisim. Gamkin Baos Hain Lashem Pirsim Nisa. Velomatinu Shiyikru Lachol Elu Mitzvah Chavivos in the Ramam. Right. Yeah, we don't find that these are called by the Ramam Mitzvah Chavivos. Hanir Lomar. So his answer. So we don't need to think about because we've done this. So Hanir Lomar Bukavanas Alpia Gemara Shabbos. Okay. You know what? Actually, I think I have this in English. Hold on. What did I call it? Near, wait, miracle oil. Yeah, is this the Gemara he's referring to? I, I took this up one year, and I don't remember anything that I said. Chaf beis, amud beis. Yeah, okay. So this is the Gemara. Macy of Rav Sheshis. So Rav Sheshis uh, objected. I don't know what he's objecting to. He says, "Michutz la parochas haidus yaroch." You should uh, arrange it, which is the nair. Outside of the the parochas um, haidus, the uh, curtain of testimony, does God need the menorah's light? Chas v'shalom now. V'halo kol arba'im shana shalchu bnei Yisrael b'midbar. This is funny, Raya. <laughs> Wasn't for, for all forty years that they were in the midbar. Lo halchu ela la'oro. They only walked by His light, right? I mean, God's fully capable of providing light. Okay. Um, rather, it is a testimony to the world that the Shekhinah dwells in Israel. Uh, my edus, what is the testimony? This is a cryptic phrase. So it was the Western um, Nair that oil was placed in. Um, in the same measure as its fellows, and from it, they would light, and with it, it would conclude. Okay, so what does this mean? So Rashi explains. Um, oh, sorry, hold on a second. So, I.e., the Western, this is from the Steindahl's translation, the Westernmost lamp would continue burning throughout, or maybe this art school, can't remember. The Westernmost lamp would continue burning throughout the day after all the others were extinguished. The rest of the lamps burn only at night, and each night he would relight the rest of the lamps from the Westernmost lamp. So that, when we say the near Tamid, it was the, I, okay, I, this is the thing that I, I had to go through this. I don't know if everyone already knows this because they're familiar with Mikdash stuff. I like didn't actually know what the Nair Tamid was uh, before I did this thing. I think we think of Nair Tamid as like the thing in the uh, shul, but this is the westernmost candle of the, the menorah. Okay, now what does that look like? Mm -hmm. So, w yeah, what does it mean the westernmost candle of the menorah? The one that's close to the Kodesh Kodesh. Okay. And it was always lit, right? And yeah, so that's what he's saying is it was always lit. Yeah, right. So hold on just a second. Is this correct? Yeah. So the Kodesh Kodesh is in the west, and the menorah is in which direction? South. The south. Okay, yeah. Yeah. How do you remember that? Because I have my oh. own quirky mnemonic device. Well, I don't know. I, have I know. Mnemonic. Yeah, you visualize it. Okay, yeah. Separately, how, like, west relative to what? Uh, what? Those are objective direct, like north is like, no, no, uh, yeah, yeah, the directions are objective. You're thinking left and right is yeah. relative, but north, the directions are always objective well, I, in the northern hemisphere. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think it's so serious. Like, you mean west relative to where the center of these is? No, I mean, in the west. Yeah, meaning we have a compass rose, then the, 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 the uh, Kodesh is in the west. 
and then the menorah is in the south and the shulchan is in the north and uh and then you you yeah i guess you know you enter from the east you know um yeah um okay fine so rashi explains so Baha and Masayim, oh yeah, this is my weird mnemonic because my, my mom has a friend whose email address is Menorah North because she was a Jew and she was like in like the, the Northwest or whatever. And I always think to myself, it's the opposite of my mom's friend's email address. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I remember it, but it's not going to work for everyone. I think the reason that no, I don't want it. is because of that Hazal that I like a lot about yeah, the facing one way or the other. Right. So I always know that you face left. like. When you're in the Heichal, you would face left to go to the menorah. In, in that, in that to the menorah. Like, I know in I, the he, no, wouldn't you face you right? Into the heichal, if you walk you into the Heichal, you'd, you'd face you right. Hachamah, you would you would delve in towards you, like facing like the south. Yeah, the south, but that's to the right though, isn't it? No. If you're in the Heichal. If, if you walk into the Heichal, west is right here, then south is right. It's to your left. South is to, oh, ye, uh, wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So never eat soggy waffles. That's your mnemonic? Uh, Ours was never eat soggy Wheaties. Oh, no. That's funny. Uh, <laughs> okay. No, anyway. Yeah, that was just saying my mom's email is wrong. My mom's friend's email is wrong. Yeah. That's how I know. So yeah. I, I, I think I just know that because you, I think it says face, it might say in that chazal. It could be, yeah. Because for me, oh, I can, wow. whenever I remember that chazal, I have to remember it via this. Oh, okay. So yeah, all right. Anyway, so Rashi says, uh, so so the, again, the Gemara itself is not so clear. It just says the Nirma Ravi uh, would uh, have the same amount of oil as the rest, and then he would light with it and then conclude with it. So Rashi explains, Ubahai Masayim, Tanan, Masakas Tamid, Lam Gibamadav, Nichnas, Umata Neros, Mizrahim, Dolkos. So if he enters and finds, yeah, if he enters and finds the eastern candles lit, Midashin Hamizrahi, Umeniach as Hamaravi. He would empty out the eastern ones and leave the western one dull. Like he would leave it lit. Shemimenu madlik as a menorah bein harbaim, because that's what he would use to light the menorah in the evening. Matzu shikvar shikava. When he, if he found that it was extinguished, kigon mishimes shimonatzadik. So that was when shimonatzadik died. The menorah went out. Madliko mizbacha ola. He would light it from the mizbacha ola. Hadam rinu beseder yuma hatavas hamisha neros kodam hatavas shte neros mashma kuhu hava metiv shachris. What was this case here? So it says the lighting of the five candles precedes the lighting of the two candles, which implies that all of them were lit at Shafris. I don't know why it's dividing between five and two. And it's learned out from Sukim. This is when the miracle didn't persist and they found it extinguished. Um, uh, because the Pasuk is not relying on, on there's going to be a miracle. Now, here's the, here's the key phrase. Oh, Rashi even uses the word Chaviv. As as long as Yisrael is uh, dear, is beloved, then the the near would last all day, and uh, and that would that was his testimony. Okay, so who cares? The Rav cares. So the Rav says he quotes this, and he says uh, he quotes the whole Gemara and Rashi. So this this nace demonstrated the belovedness of Israel to Hashem. Um, that we are the chosen people. In the days of the Chashmonaim, those, the uh, self-Greekifiers, uh, meaning the uh, people who, I guess, became Hellenist uh, devotees. Yeah, well, self-Greekers, right? Oh, Miss Yavnim. The yeah. Uh, no, the self-Hellenists. Yeah. People who made themselves... Yeah. Yeah. It's like the Hildian Cyclops. But I'm trying to emphasize the mis- Hispael. Oh, okay. They made themselves into Greeks, the people who made themselves into Greeks. Oh, okay. Or Hispael can, oh, this is a good thing to know grammatically. Hispael can either mean making yourself or it can mean faking it. Mm-hmm. So um, th- those are two. Uh, like in Mishle, there's a post, Yish Mish, yish mis Asher, the Ain Kol, um, Yish Mis Roshesh, the Hon Rav, something like that, which the Mepharshim say either means there's someone who makes himself rich but he is actually poor and there's someone who makes himself poor, but he's actually rich. And then there's another interpretation that there's people who act rich, but they have nothing, and people who act poor. So I don't know which one he means here. Anyway, the entire hatred of the Romans and the Greeks towards Israel was, was because of this reason. 
that they, Romans and Greeks, didn't want to accept the chosenness of, of Israel. Therefore, the, um, the perpetual miracle of the Ner Maravi, and the Nes of the Pach Shemen, demonstrated to everybody the connection, the special connection between us and between God. And it testified to the fact that the Shekhinah rests with Israel, is dwelling with Israel. Um, did you end up, I overheard your, uh, because it was uh, three weeks ago, when you were saying, uh, you were translating uh, Shura as steeped. The Shekhinah was steeped. Maybe. Yeah, yes. I was curious as to how Rufi Zaha responded to that. Because uh, I thought, I can't get it out of my head. It's not literally, I mean, you, people do use it to mean steep, like uh, sure, but is like you're immersed in a tinus. But I thought there's a, I don't know, thinking about the, the Shekhina as like uh, infusing tea oh, yeah. and I think I was thinking it's good imagery. Like, like, uh, like steeped or also like steeped. Like it's like, it's uh -huh. like a... Like confused, confused with yeah. All right. Vishanach no amenifar. The derech ner imanu. The derech of ner that the shchina is connected with us. Kamoshi his kasher im Moshe derech hasne abor beish. I don't know why he goes to Moshe. Just like the with Moshe, that the snare the snare was burning in fire. Vinir de mipne zeh nish nish tansa bedavka mitzvos ner chanuka mikoshar mitzvos. So now you can differentiate. This is why Ner Hanukkah is different from all the other mitzvahs. Even though all of them are for Prisuminisa, this is why Ner Hanukkah is called Mitzvah Chaviva. So that's his answer that it's true that you have other mitzvahs that are, are Chaviv, but none of them are, uh, are demonstrative of the, um, the Shechina being Shura with Kal Yisrael. And um, uh, the Baal Hakuntris has a shear about the menorah where. Uh, he says that the idea, this is his theory about the Kodesh Hakodashim, that the Kodesh Hakodashim is supposed to, um, not the Kodesh Hakodashim, the Kodesh is supposed to um, exemplify like a, uh, a, an inn, like a, a house with a, a, a table and a, uh, and that's the Shulchan, and then the, the lamp, and then the, the Mizbeach, I think, um, I can't remember what he said. I would think it would be the bed, right? But I, I don't know if that's the thing. It might, it might be. It might be the entire. Might be the kosher production also because I know that the, the um, <laughs> the yeah, right. That's what you think. But the uh, the Aaron is described as a throne, right? Like we describe Hashem as Yoshev Hakruvim, right? Um, yeah. So um, so the Baal Hakuntris wanted to say that. Uh, that the idea of the uh, menorah signifying shina is um, that like when you pass by a house and and you can tell if someone's home by the fact that the like the lamp is lit you know so like it is uh, it's you know that that's why it was chosen to signify the shina and then furthermore it's funny he doesn't quote the actual pasuk but with the snare we say um, we call God hold on in hazino. I just want to read the full Pazuk. Yes, we do call him that. <laughs> Come on, um, uh, ooh, This is in Lama Gimel Tazayim. Umi Meget Eretz Meloa Uritzon Shilchni Sne, the one who dwells in the bush, uh, which is uh, clearly a reference to the burning bush and uh, and associating Shina with that, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, so that's the Rav's explanation. So this explanation I like better than yesterday's Rav's explanation um, about the Chaviva thing, because that wasn't really explaining why Narakhan was different than the other ones, but this is uh, an idea of Chaviv, yeah. Um, I, I should have numbered, I numbered what was quite upset about it. Yeah. I remember him just saying, oh, this is how they refer to like the, it's like Christian, like, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, I was like, ah, and he was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is true. That's how they refer to the Shkina with it. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, it's I'm, as I'm reading this, maybe the thing that um, maybe this I'm just going to mention this uh, primarily for Yosef and Chaim, and it's more of a teaser for you guys because you didn't hear it. But I, I was working on this thing with Yosef, and I just mentioned it to Chaim like in the last couple of minutes about we found this midrash. Oh, there's no, it came from you though, so this ex it, it, it includes everybody except for your show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, uh, no, but you'll hear it for the first time that there's a midrash that the Mishkan was the malach of the Mishkan was completed on Chafei Bekislev. Okay, but then the the miluim the dedication was delayed till Chodesh Nisan, and the the reason why God wanted to delay it is because He wanted to delay it the dedication until the month that Yitzchak was born in. 
Okay, that's a weird reason. Okay, and that's what we're working on. But then the Midrash says, uh, now it turns out Kislev lost out. Okay, so um, God says, don't worry, I'll, I'll make it, I'll, I'll, I'll pay it back to you. I'll make it up to you. So uh, he made it up with Kislev in terms of the Hanukkah of the Hashmonayim. That that's when we had the dedication of a uh, rededication of the Mishkan in uh, in Kislev, you know. So I'm wondering if um, something something Shrina something. Okay, let's stop here for today. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. All right, but th- th- that's for another thing. Okay, so I don't know what we're going to do tomorrow. I mean, I wanted to initially go into the remaining halachos, but we're not going to have time to like go fully into depth. And also, you guys have been starting your halachos here early, right? No. I'll oh, that was only yesterday. Okay, fine. I think tomorrow's going to be right here. Okay, fine. All right. All right. So we'll we'll find something to do, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. Stop for today.